Well, hi everybody, and welcome back to Tim Time Projects again. We're in the garage again. Won't be doing any uh, no electronic work today. Uh, trying to get some things done that needed done around the house, uh, and uh, the chainsaw is one of them. Remember, a while back I did the McCullough chainsaw, and I put the new well, the used coil in it. Got about a half a season out of it and that coil bit it too. I kind of expected that coil wouldn't last because that was the original bad one. But let's see, can't find a coil anywhere for that. The old Mac Cat back like 19, early 1980s vintage, I guess. Couldn't find a, uh, I'm staring down at it, couldn't find a, uh, a uh, coil anywhere for it. So I looked around and I found a used, uh, a used chainsaw. It looks used but like brand new and it's a uh, Husqvarna and Husqvarna is starting to become like the uh, Ken the Kenwoods inside the house where I have two Husqvarna tractors and all I saw. I didn't plan it that way but it just seems that that's what showed up at my doorstep. Uh, so I'll show you I have an oil leak and I think we're just gonna try and shotgun it. It's the Husqvarna 440, 440E and uh, the oil leak appears to be coming from the chain oiler. So I picked up a, there's a rubber hose that goes from the oiler and I'll show you how that goes and how it goes on. And we're just going to shotgun that really without doing anything. I haven't really hardly used it. I just know that the oil's leaking from that general area. So we're going to give that a shot and see if maybe we can fix that. So I'm going to pause it while I reposition the camera. Alrighty, so here's the hose, and uh, ordered it, no, not from Amazon that time. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is make sure I stay in view of the camera here, but loosen up the load on the chain a little bit, just a turn or two, and then I'll take this bolt off, or nut off here, it's a 13 millimeter. And by loosening the, ch the chain up a little bit, it lets you uh, lets the chain slack forward. So this isn't held on by the chain and the bar. So I'll put this off to the side, along with that. We'll take the chain off as well. Gotta push that back, get it out of our way, loosen it up. I'll, uh, well, the chain feels plenty oiled right now, that's for sure. Before it didn't seem as, as oiled. I'll put that out of our way. And we will get this out of our way. And Chris was cutting a few things with it. Couldn't wait. All right. Get my rag. All right, so like I said, this is the 440E. Here's the oiler part right up here. And it pushes through here and the chain bar actually pushes up against it. And that's where the hole is as well for the chain bar where it can duct the oil through. And uh, allegedly that's supposed to make a nice tight seal, but I don't really think it does up here. It feels like there's a, a blemish or something in that. And, and by blemish, I mean almost like it was smashed, like it was put in incorrectly and smashed. As you can tell, the saw doesn't look like it's had a lot of hours on it. I have to watch because I have the chickens running out in the yard, and uh, that's all well and good probably for them. But they had, uh, now on this one here, what I'm going to do is, I may not even have to do this. In fact, I'm going to try and shortcut it. I may not even have to, uh, but I do want to pull the wire off the, off the spark plug. I sure don't want this to try and start while I'm doing anything to it. So I will take this off. This is the top cover, and from here I can access the plug wire. Yeah. Uh, anyhow, the chickens were out running around, and while I was sitting out there watching them, and I had the, the goofy dog out, they, a fox ran over, grabbed the little baby bunt, well I don't know if it was 
baby, but a little bunny rabbit and took off. Uh, so I kind of think I better keep a closer eye on the chickens for a while. So now what I could do, if I have an issue where I can't get this uh, pulley off, you can actually pull the spark plug out and uh, you can shove a little rope or something down in there, something soft, so that when the piston comes to the end of its travel, it stops it. But I'm going to just try, since this doesn't look like it has a lot of, a lot of use on it, I'm going to just try and see what happens if I try and tap this off here as it is. There is a toll for taking this off, of course, as you can imagine, but there's also another way to do it as well. So let me get a punch and a hammer and we'll give it a shot. All right, if you look at these on this on this clutch assembly, uh, it has uh, two little grooves in the end and they're actually made a certain way uh, where it's got a contour on one side and a gentle slope on the other. Well, the, where there's the contour, you can tap that and spin that off of the, uh, actually off of the flywheel. You'll notice you couldn't go the other way because it's got the, gen the gentle slope. You can't go up, but this side has the contour. So I should be able to give it a nice, one nice whack and probably pop it off. We'll see. All right, well, it's not gonna come. So what I will do, so I'll show you what I was talking about with sticking a rope in there. You take the plug out and stick a rope in. Let me get those tools. Alrighty. And the dog's in the doorway staring at me. Here we go. This is a three quarters. Is the size of the plug on this. The spark plug is. You can see I took that off. So now in the in the great spark plug hole, what I'm going to do is let's turn this down a little bit. It turns real easy now. And I'll put this rope in. This is just a piece of, I think, 316 antenna. That's what I used to guide one of my antennas. And the idea is if you put enough of this in there, when the piston comes to the top, it'll stop it from going any further. We'll make it all the way to the top. And since it's nice and soft, it won't hurt the piston or the piston wall or anything else. So, let's stick as much of this as I can in there. Beautiful day here today. We had some storms move through yesterday. We really didn't get many of them, but all around us they had them. Take this. I had like a little lump that I couldn't get past. All right, and there you have it. So now, theoretically, I should be able to turn this and it'll reach the top and stop. And there it is. So now, I should be able to give this one or two good hits. There we go. Two hits. You can use a, a you know, a dull, dull punch, a dull screwdriver, or a dull chisel. Okay, so now I got that off. This just pulls right off. Alrighty, then underneath that, let me grab my white rag. Don't know where I put it. But here's a, here's a, a usable one. So this comes off, that's, yeah, and I throw it. That's the roller bearing. We'll kind of make sure that gets cleaned up a little bit because I just dropped it on the third here. Then next comes off the cover for the uh, for the pump. And if you'll notice, there's like a spring in here, and the spring is actually like threads. We'll put that done, and then there's one screw in there. And even though it kind of looks like a Phillips, it kind of looks like a flathead too. So it might be like a posi drive. I don't know. I know that a number two Phillips fits okay, but not perfect. I didn't try a 
posi driver or anything. Okay, so once you take that one screw out, then this whole doodad, this whole cover shield thingy lifts off. So let me get that out of the way. I'll put that over here as well. Now you can see in here, let's see if you can see. I'll stand it up a little bit. Here's the, uh, this is the oil pump, and this is that hose that I'm dealing with. And that's a piece of dirt. So, what I'll do, try and prop this up a little so you can see what, I, what, my, pl what my big plan is here. So my plan is when I take this all out. What the heck? There's something on the side of that right there I don't like. Yeah, it feels like a little hole. Hopefully there's not a problem with the oil pump itself. But anyway, I'm going to take this off. And that's going to get me the pretty much everything all is, all is one one piece. The, the hose, the pump. All right, there's there's dumb dog. Alright, and there's there it is. I lifted it up a little too high for you to see. That's how it, it all comes off like that. And then here this hose just pulls right off. You can see the the area where it matches up where the uh, oil goes through. When th this turns and pumps the oil through. So let me leave that and me make sure there's actually there's one on the other side as well. So you could probably put it in both ways. Oliver! I think, I think he saw somebody pull in. Okay. So, let me get that, that hose. I'll see if I can back out a little more so you can see more. Uh, if you can, I'll just raise it a little bit. All right. Here's said hose the new hose. I'm going to get a little bit of grease and put it inside there to uh, just make life easier putting it back together. So I'm putting grease, just a little bit of chassis grease in there, nothing nothing too heavy. Actually I put it around everything because it fits inside a groove or a hole there as well as this does. And you can see it goes all the way up. So let me get a uh, towel and clean that off in there. Oh, I found my rag. It's laying on the ground over here, of course. So I'll just swipe that all through, but not wipe it down into the hole. I didn't think it would be that dirty inside or I would have cleaned it better before I started my little project here. Alright, so this is going to go in like so which means I've got to put this in like so and I can see grease popping out of everywhere so I guess that means I got grease in there sufficiently All right. so now I just have to feed this guy back down in here The oil pump itself fits in. It looks like it's going to go right back the way it was with that little questionable area raised high. And the rubber hose, it's got a little square that fits in. That fits in there and this goes right around the bend up into there. So everything seems to fit in okay. Now the uh, one thing you will notice, this has a little notch right there that's poked through and that pushes down on that and holds that in there against the case. I'll just wipe 
that down a little bit just to make sure there's no big hunks of wood. This can go back on like so. And if you look at, uh, it feels like it's being held up a little bit, and that's because it pushes down. You put the screw in, it pushes down on that and holds that in place. Up here, this looks a lot better the way that that sticks through. The other way, it just I don't know if you can see on this. It looks. It's, it's dimpled right there like it was folded over like that and put together like that. So whether that was causing my issue or apparently these hoses feels kind of dry rotted but it can't be. It's not that old. Uh, there's also a little, little scratch up in here too. I don't know if that would do it. I'm hoping. This is all wishful thinking here. So back together goes this guy here. don't want to cut new threads so I will back it up a little bit till I feel it bump and that threads in the threads in nice and easy before I start tightening it down I want to make sure everything's lined up to where it should be to be lined up. I certainly don't want to dimple that end of that seal again. All right, then next comes the oil drive. This doohickey here. And it just kind of, you can spin it on down, it'll spin down. It feels like it's threading, but it's really the fact that it's turning onto the worm gear and then, then it'll continue to go. Here's this needle bearing and I'm going to put a little shot of a, a lubricant on it. I have this one shot stuff, works pretty good. It's a nice thin lubricant that seems to stay everywhere. Alright, so that's all on. Next thing I'm going to do is comes the housing and the chain, or the chain drive. It has two little notches here, and they line up. That's what actually turns that. So we'll put that on. And once we put it on, it feels right. You'll see it, it goes level with the shaft sticking through there. Next comes this little guy. You can tell that's not the side that we hit to get it out. But what we do notice is it's threaded backwards. I'm turning counterclockwise to tighten it. Now this you really don't have to uh, make tight because what happens is when you pull that with that cord to yank start it, it will uh, it'll tighten on its own. So there's no it's not necessary to beat that tight again. All right, here's my port. Let me get things out of the way. I'm going to flip this back over. We'll take the, the cord out of here and see how, how it goes back together. I guess I could have left it run. I didn't mean to pull the cord out. It just basically pulls right out. There's no, no tricks or anything. It comes right out. Here goes your spark plug. Feel free to inspect your own plug if you're doing that. This doesn't have much time on it, so I can inspect it. And I don't really think it's going to need change. You can tell the thing doesn't look that dirty. We'll find out. All right. I want to tighten that down. It has to be tight, but don't, don't break it. Don't yank on it. I always say run it down until it stops and give it a uh, more. You saw that with one hand, not two hands, not a big breaker bar. All right, you go back on there. You can go back on there as well. Now, I guess for safety purposes, you probably shouldn't put the plug wire on until you're absolutely finished with everything. Just push those on, they'll snap. Yeah, just so that uh, in case you're forgetting and yanking on something uh, and it starts up, you don't cut your arms off. Uh, alrighty, so let me put the chain and I 
That little hole there, I don't know if you can see it, a little hole there, that one on the top, that's where the oil goes. And if you switch your bar the other way, you know, one on the other side. But that hole there, if you can see the one point to, that little hole there lines up on that slotted groove that I showed you on the uh, on the hose from the oil pump. Next goes your chain. The chain. Which way does the chain go? Generally, I shouldn't say this, but generally these type of chains are only going to go one way. And if you're ever not sure, just remember that at the bottom of the chainsaw down here, when it's pulling that way, is where you want to do your cutting. It should be pulling it toward you. So we'll take a look at this and see. I have it. Looks like it would go this way. And I'll know in a second when I look down here. I'm getting it up there. So yeah, here's the sharp end, and you can feel it's definitely the sharp end, and it's going that way. And think about it, you didn't, definitely wouldn't want to be cutting if the chain was shooting the other way, because every time you go on a branch or something, it would shoot your chainsaw away. You want to kind of pull your chainsaw toward you, or toward the, toward the cut. All right. Get this guy on here, like so. I mean, that's my method for remembering the way a chain goes. Uh, and also, like I said, on, on this, I don't even think you can put this kind of chain on backwards. All right, so let me uh, I'm gonna put the chain on. I'm going to be moving the saw all around to tighten everything up, and then I'll be right back. All right, so the chain's back on, I think. That's, yeah, that seems to be good. Cutting grooves are facing this way. Everything else is ready to go. We'll put our lid back on. I'll pull, pull out on the, the bar a little bit as I do this. Sometimes you may have to loosen that up. I may not have loosened it enough. Or untighten it as they say. I can, I can untighten this like another turn. There's another turn. Come on, chainsaw. I can't see what I'm doing as usual. Seems to spin nice and easy, nice and good. I'll put this nut back on, but I'm not tighten it, just start it on there a little bit. So it's just making contact, just with my fingers. All right. And I'll give this, there's one turn and one and a half. There's two, that's about where we started from. Feels pretty good, and I'll start to tighten that up. Make sure everything's aligned correctly so that it looks okay. Looks pretty good to me. That's the brake, that all looks good. That turns nice and good. Tighten it the rest of the way. Again, tight, but don't break it. it doesn't have to be that crazy tight. That turns good. Actually, I think I'm going to tighten that up a little bit. The adjustment on it, if you look, looks kind of sloppy there. It's got to be a little bit, a little bit more snug. 
we'll loosen that up again just enough and let's see what we got. yep not even a quarter of a turn a snug up and it's it's got a little bit of play but not too much I just like to be up against the bar but not tight all right that's good that's good So now I gotta start it up and see see if it doesn't leak. Pray that it doesn't leak. Alright, you might not hear do anything but hear a lot of noise. I don't know how much you're gonna be able to see once I move it around. But Chris never let me touch it, so I don't even know how to really start it. for a little bit and if it doesn't have a big puddle underneath it then it was a success that's generally the way it was working before you run it for a minute or two not even that long but when you stopped it a minute later there's a big puddle underneath it so we'll be back all right time to see if it's back to the drawing board or if it's fixed I'll zoom in a little bit because I got to get down there and lift it you can see beside it, those puddles were from it just sitting a few minutes. It's been sitting about 10 minutes, so. No puddle. Nothing on my hand. I think we call that a completion. We won't really know until Chris comes back and tries to break it again. So there was a few other things I did want to tell you about. Um, let's see, one. Chris's car, the uh, remember we fixed the speedometer on it, the, the odometer kept going out. We put that capacitor in, like a lot of people had mentioned, on uh, on YouTube and, and in anywhere else on the internet. We put that in, the capacitor, and that took care of it. He's been driving it, it's been probably five, six months, and uh, down there in, in the extreme heat, he hasn't had any issues. Also, his uh, lights, he said it was like driving home. He felt like he was at a ball field. He said it was so well lit up after we polished those up, and uh, he was happy about that. So, with almost 400,000 miles on that Prius, uh, it continues to hold together. Let's see. Still working on the uh, RC phase oscillator. I built one, and it's easy to build, but... I was curious about changing the stages of the oscillator and, and what it does to the frequency because when you change the stages obviously you're changing the uh, the amount of phase difference so it would have to change the frequency as well but uh, I have some really crazy anomalies happening with that when I try that so uh, Maybe I can make a, a video of that, at least at least uh, just showing you how I build it with. Uh, I just used a uh, 2N222 transistor, but uh, that's for another video. I just figured I'd let you in on a few, on a few of the other things. So, again, thanks for watching. Take care.